Hey everybody, Pastor Jason and Pastor Jody back hey, with hey. you on this Life Change Daily devotional. We thank you so much for joining us. We are back, Pastor Jody, Amen. talking about clear vision yeah. and clear vision as it relates to worship. We began talking about the, the story of Zacchaeus. I want us to review this one more time. I'm actually going to read Zacchaeus or, or uh, the story of Zacchaeus in Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. If you would just want to follow along with me or just, just listen here. It says, Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. A man was there named Zacchaeus who was also was the chief tax collector, and he was rich. He tried to see who Jesus was, but was not able from the crowd because he was little in stature. So he ran ahead and he climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass this, that way. When Jesus came to, to the vicinity, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down. For today, I must remain at your house. So he hurried and came down and received him joyfully. When they, the people who were around, saw it, they all murmured, saying, He has gone to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half my possessions to the poor. And if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I will repay him four times as much. Jesus said to him, Today, salvation has come to this house because he also is a son of abraham for the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost amen yesterday we talked about how how our personal worship is so powerful and you shared a teaching with our worship team a few nights ago uh in the practice and you talked about zacchaeus among others yeah. and it was talking about identity being and, and how some people it is very difficult for them to see who they are who they to are. see clearly who yeah, they yeah. are teach us about that pastor jody well it's just yeah i've been through it myself and i guess that's why it's so important to mm -hmm. me but i feel like that whenever you're talking about vision and you're talking about where you're going and uh, i heard a pastor friend of mine say this and i'm sure you've heard it before but mm -hmm. it's really powerful that the, there's a reason that your rear view mirror is smaller yes. than your windshield <laughs> yes. because where you're going is a whole lot more important than where you've been. And you might have to glance back every now and then to say, man, look where I've come mm -hmm. from. But where we're going is really big and it's huge. And uh, so th what the enemy would love to try to do is try to get our vision skewed a little bit yes. and get you not to understand who you are. Yeah. And so uh, and we were just talking and, and we, we talked a little bit about Zacchaeus. And then we talked a little bit about some some other men in the Bible, but uh, I we were talking about this, and I was just thinking uh, the other night, and I was telling them, you know, it's like every sermon you ever hear about Thomas, everybody wants to call him doubting Thomas, right. and that's all you ever right. hear. And and uh, and the fact is, he only doubted one time. Yeah. Matter of fact, I believe it was uh, early on, earlier than that, he was willing to go and die with Jesus. Yes. Uh, didn't sound like a, da a doubter to me. That sounded like some when all the other disciples said, "Hey, let's we don't want to go that way mm -hmm. because the last time we came through here, uh, it almost cost us our life." But Thomas was the one that said, mm -hmm. "Hey, wait a minute! If we need to, let's go die with Jesus." Yeah, yeah. I love him that much that I'm going to go. I, right. I don't want to go die with him. Does that sound like a doubter? No, no. But I believe that that's what we like to do mm -hmm. in today's church. We like to just go ahead and say, "Oh, well." They made a mistake, or they had a bad day, or they did this, or mm -hmm. they did that. Well, that's just, that's that's your label, that's your identity. Yeah. But that's not your identity. Not at all. That's not your identity at all. Matter of fact, Thomas was. They some people think that Thomas was one of the first missionaries to go into India, mm. and to, one of the first missionaries to actually go into the Far East. And so that doesn't sound like a doubter to me. Right, that right. sounds like a man uh, who loved Jesus, and maybe he asked some questions, and maybe mm -hmm. he was doubting one day, but yeah. that wasn't his identity. Right. Or, or Peter, we, we know that whole story. We've talked about that on this program before mm -hmm. uh, with Peter and what the mistakes that he made, but he walked on water. Yes, uh, right. He, he had, you know, he, he got out of the boat. Some of y'all might need to get out of the boat from, right. around with some of the friends you're around. That's true. <laughs> and, and God might allow you to walk on some water and do some things you never thought you could do. Right. But the, the fact is today that through your worship, and we're mm -hmm. talking about Zacchaeus, we're talking about climbing that tree, mm -hmm. we're talking about getting intimate with God in our worship, that you should do that. Mm -hmm. You should begin to worship him. Forget about what people around you. Matter of fact, get out from around people who are speaking the negative stuff and, oh, yes. you can't do this and you can't yes. do that. Oh, you're not going to be healed and this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. You have to get, get out of that boat and mm -hmm. you need to go in and around some people that believe in the healing and deliverance mm -hmm. and 
and and and your best and speak life into you. Mm-hmm. And so uh, identity is a huge thing. If your vision's not quite straight and you don't know where you're going, a lot of times it's because of your identity. Mm-hmm. So like Zacchaeus, he knew that he needed to get some things straight. And yeah. so he climbed that tree. Yes. We talked about it already. He climbed that tree. He worshiped. You look at that tree like worship. Yeah. He began to worship and climbed that tree. And I guess he thought, well, I can't see Jesus. I need to go a little higher. Yeah. So he climbed a little mm-hmm. bit higher. And it, well, I still can't see him. I, he climbed. And then finally, he saw Jesus. And like Pastor Jason was talking yesterday, Jesus saw him. Yes. And when Jesus saw him, there was an encounter. Yeah. And that's what happens in your worship. You have an encounter with God. Mm-hmm. Because I don't know if you know this or not, but when you begin to worship, when, you, when you're when you praising God and you're, you're talking about God, mm-hmm. that's what praise usually is, is when you say, hey, look what the Lord has done. That's all good. Right. But when you begin to sing to him. Yes. And being a dad, I know uh, that when my kids start saying, Daddy, I, I love you, mm-hmm. and they want to sit up, Come they on. ain't nothing a daddy won't do for their kids Absolutely when nothing. their kid starts to worship yes. them. And God is no different. So Zacchaeus climbs that tree. He goes to all that trouble, and he ha- and he sees Jesus, and Jesus sees him. And his life is changed mm-hmm. to where he starts returning all the stuff he stole. Yes. And all his life is changed. Yes. Worship will you might you're saved and all those things, but when you begin to worship, mm-hmm. your life is changed. You have an encounter. Yes. You can never have an encounter with God where your life isn't changed. Yeah. We have them every single week. Yes. Every single day we come in here. <laughs> right. We have life change. Yeah. Because we worship. We worship Him. And so you have to learn what your identity is. Mm-hmm. You don't have to listen, don't listen to the people to the right or to the left about what uh well, you remember, you know, back a few years ago you did this or you mm-hmm. did you did that. Well, yeah. Well, where am I at now? I climbed a tree and I right. met with Jesus. Right. I worshiped him in spirit and in truth. And the word says that's what he's searching for. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, it's the one who will worship him in spirit and in truth. So I'm going to climb that tree. I'm that tree. And guess what? We talked about it yesterday. He's going to come home with us. Yes. He went home with Zacchaeus. So right. that means to me, that's a revelation that he wants every area of every my life. Every area. Everything. Yes, every single thing. Everything, you know, you can't hide anything from him anyway. Not a thing. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is he wants you to voluntarily say, God, I want you in this part of right. my life. I want you in this part of my right. All of this. I want I want to be a follower. Mm-hmm. You know, like that book, the uh, book that Pastor Jason let me read, a fan or a follower. I want to be a follower. I yes. want to know every intimate detail of you, Jesus, and I want you to to talk through me. Mm. A lot of times come on. we can't hear anything because we're not listening or we're not close enough yes. to him where we can hear. Or maybe we don't we don't we're not quiet long enough to hear. Right. That's my problem. Sometimes I talk too much. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I just need to listen. But the first thing is we need to worship and we need to get closer and closer mm-hmm. and closer and closer to him with our and that's what worship does, Pastor Jason. And I'll just say this that when I was younger and this is my own little personal testimony of work of worship mm. and climbing that tree. I was uh, about 19 or 20 years old and I dealt with in this time of my life, I had made some bad choices and it had led me down a path of depression in my life. And the worst thing you can do when you get depressed is isolate yourself yep. because then the enemy can dominate you. When mm-hmm. you isolate, he'll dominate. Mm. He really will. Boy, that's a word. And so I, I got put myself in a room. I started doing things that I had no business doing, going out on weekends and doing some crazy things that I shouldn't have been doing. And finally, it was to the point of where I just didn't know where else to go. But I remember sitting in my bedroom one night. I was still living with my parents, and I was it was one two o'clock in the morning, and I was so depressed. I had shaved in days, and I just from and it just was going through a low place in my life. And I'm like, God, what in the world? am I going to do? And I look over to the right of, of where I was at and on the counter, and there was a Bible that mm. had been given to me when I graduated high school. It had so much dust on it, Pastor Jason, that I couldn't even tell it was a Bible. And God said, that's your problem. Mm. You don't have a relationship with Good me. God Almighty. And I, I thought, I thought I was saved. I've been singing since I was eight years old. I've been in church my whole life. My daddy was a pastor. Mm-hmm. Lord, what are you talking about? And, and the Lord said, look, I, I had left you, mm. but if, if you don't get into that right there, this, the word, mm. if you don't worship me, you don't live, give everything to me, then I, these things are going to happen because you're making bad choices. So I got that Bible and opened it up, uh, Pastor Jason. For years, I began uh, to try to write songs, but I opened that word up and I went to, I believe it's in Romans where it says, present your bodies a living sacrifice, yeah, yeah. holy and acceptable. And I began to sing a little chorus 
automatically. Never wrote, wrote a song in my whole life and began to sing this song. It says, I will live holy and acceptable. Mm. I will live holy and acceptable for your glory will fill my life. If I will pray and seek your face, all that you ask is that I live holy and acceptable. And then just that quick, this little bridge comes to my my spirit and I say, when you go through struggles and it seems that you might lose, just get on your face before him. Let his spirit move and then say, I will live oh holy God. and acceptable. Oh, my God. And God changed me. I mean, changed me just like that. But, y'all, I was so depressed. Mm. I had to find that tree. Yeah, yeah. Call worship. And I had to climb it mm -hmm. in my bedroom. I woke everybody up in the house that mm -hmm. night because I, had, I was set free just that quick <laughs> through, through my oh, worship. Oh. And uh, <laughs> that's my, my story. I don't know what your story yeah. is, but I promise you, if you— if you will climb that tree of worship and you mm -hmm. will worship him through it, he will take you to another level mm -hmm. and Jesus will go home with you and he will wreck your life. Yeah, I, I, I look at this because there's a couple things that you you brought out in this whole thing. Uh, one of the things that you talked about was how how the, the enemy and, and, and many of us who align ourselves with his practices, if we're not careful, though we yeah. don't think we are, will do the things he does. Here's the first thing that happened. Now, I'm supposing on here that this is the, the religious crowd because the Bible says in verse seven, when they saw it, they all murmured saying, he has gone to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. sinner. This yeah. is what they were saying. Yeah. They joined in the accusation right. of right. this. The Bible, as a matter of fact, says that that Satan, this, this is how he is referred to, is that he is the accuser of the brethren. Yeah. He is the accuser of the brethren. He brings accusation. As a matter of fact, when Jude was talking about, uh, was giving everybody a, uh, uh, an understanding of, of the way that you should conduct yourself, he said, even the archangel Michael, when he was contending with Satan, did not bring malicious accusation, but instead said, the Lord rebuke you. Yeah. What he was saying was that the archangel Michael wasn't even going to align himself with the practices of Satan by making an accusation against Satan. Yeah. Instead, he just said, the Lord rebukes you. Wow. When we align ourselves with accusation and complaint, mm. we put ourselves in a place where instead of raising up to a higher level, we are digging ourselves down deeper Absolutely. in the mire. Absolutely. I love something that you said because you didn't say, I, you, uh, as, I, as best I recall, somebody may have to run the tape back. But as far as, as, as best I recall, I didn't hear you say, I was depressed. I heard you say, I was struggling with depression. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because what you, what you, what you even in that moment, whether you did it unconsciously or not, Right. There was a moment that inside of you, when you look back, you said, I'm not even going to say that at that time I was that thing. Right. I was struggling with it. Yes. I was contending with it. I was suffering with it, but I was not it. No. That's not who not. I was. No. Jesus looks at, at, at Zacchaeus and says, I need to come to your house today. And when he gets there, this is what, now, now I don't know what the conversation is. I don't know. I don't know anything that happened because obviously we get to this place. But what we see is that Zacchaeus looks at Jesus at this point, moment. I love it because we've been talking about seeing, and this yeah. is how Zacchaeus begins his, his, his sentence. Look, Lord, I want you to see something that's going to be changed in me. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Look at this. I love this because the Bible says, oh, man, I'm, I mean, I'm feeling anointing yes, on me right yes, now. Yes. The Bible says that when Jesus was passing by, he looked up wow. and saw Zacchaeus. Yes. So Zacchaeus was trying to get high enough to see Jesus, but was at such a place that Jesus had to look up and see him. I yeah. love it because all this crowd around Zacchaeus, like you said yesterday, all this crowd around Z Zacchaeus, they didn't like him. No. They didn't like him. Yeah. And, and we find out because they decide they're going to start throwing their shade as soon as Jesus says he's going to the house. Absolutely. 
Jesus, Zacchaeus put him in a position where Jesus had to look up above the crowd to see him. Wow. Oh, that's good. Pastor Jody, when we hit a level where we can't just see Jesus, but when Jesus can look above circumstances, above situations, Absolutely. that's what happened to you at two o'clock in the morning Absolutely. in that bedroom is that you got to a place, you, you, you go up to your dusty Bible. Yes, I did. And Absolutely. you open that thing up. Romans 12. I'm presenting my body as a living sacrifice. All of a sudden, Jesus looks up and says, there's the guy I want to give a song to. Absolutely. Here you go. That's exactly how it <clears throat> happened, brother. <clears throat> I love it because, <clears throat> excuse me, in verse 9, Jesus says, today salvation has come to this house. See, it's not just that Jesus wants to see you passing by on the road. Right. It's that he wants you to come, wants to come to your house. Yeah. That's the first thing he said to Zacchaeus. Absolutely. He didn't say to Zacchaeus, "Hey, come down here. Let's talk about your your ill practices as a as a tax collector. No. Come down here and let's talk about what you were intending to see." He looks up at Zacchaeus and says, "Hurry, get down here. Me and you need to go to your house right now. Absolutely, well, I'm well, supposed well. to go to your house." Zacchaeus, you've put yourself at a level where I had to look up and now I can see you and only you. So yours is the house I want to go to. I know everybody lined the streets to come see me and that's why you couldn't see right. me before. Yeah. But you positioned yourself where I could see you and I want to come to your house. Well, that's strong. That's awesome. Boy, that's powerful. That's lady. awesome. Yes, sir. So I want to share a quick story with you and then we're going to go, go into prayer. And I've shared it on this program before, but I've never shared it with you. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a time in my life, I, I, I there again, it, it, I was in ministry, but I had made uh, I had made uh, uh, some dumb decisions, and and when I when I needed to leave the place of ministry that I was, I did not listen to the to the voice of the Spirit when it was telling me to go. I stayed, and because I stayed, uh, there were a couple things that happened. Eventually, obviously, I had to go. Yeah. But at that stage, it wasn't leaving with a level of joy. It wasn't right. leaving with a level of triumph. It was it was leaving with a lot of offense, a lot of hurt. Truthfully, some pretty deep hatred that I was dealing with. Absolutely. For months and months, I'm sorting through all of that until the the hatred becomes so complete that I have a that each night I was going to sleep with thoughts of taking out the person. Uh, when I say taking out, I'm talking about murdering. The person that I felt like had been responsible for the greatest betrayal in my life. Yeah. I finally looked at that and said, no, this is no way for a man of God to go to sleep. Right. And so I, I prayed and, and I overcame that. But there's a couple things that I was doing in that season. One was uh, I, I for the second time in my life, I, I had chosen to, to go through the plan where I was reading the Bible in 90 days. And so I was in. It, I was I was into that plan. I was about three weeks deep, deep into that plan, and uh, I was I was reading my Bible every day, and I had not never stopped reading my Bible. I had never stopped praying, but there was one thing I had stopped. I had quit worshiping. I was frustrated because, in part, uh, you know, I had been removed some from some relationships and and had deep relationships with with some people who were worship leaders, and and I felt like that that had been ripped from me, and then. I was, you know, I was around places and I was comparing everybody and every worship situation to yeah. what what I was in and what I've been involved in. And it made me frustrated. It made me angry. And so one of the things that I stopped doing was I stopped I stopped worshiping because for me, I actually before I leave the house every day, I have to have a time of worship. Yeah. Most of the time I wake up with a song in my heart. So I usually find that song and that's the one I'll just keep worshiping to over and over again. I, I at that point I couldn't even tell you the last time I had woken up with a song in my heart. I had stopped worshiping and I was in there and it was on the 21st of January and I was I was going through uh, my regular reading and while I was in my reading that day the spirit of the Lord spoke to me and he said, "If you will worship me today, I will give you your song back." Mm -hmm. I knew what that was going to mean. And at that point I was willing to pay the price. Yeah. You know, I had gone through the tough stuff. And one of the things I did was I, I, I was at the time I was using Pandora. I just, you know, yeah. click a channel on Pandora and, yeah. and let, let them talk to me. And, and so at the time I was on like Bethel worship and elevation worship and things yeah. like that. Yeah. 
but even there were even inside of that some songs that I didn't want to hear because I knew that they would bring some difficult things back to remember. So I remember shooting over to Israel Houghton Radio and 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 uh, you know Israel starts out singing one song and then it shoots to William McDowell, thirteen minutes of I surrender all to you, yeah. everything I give to you. Withholding nothing. Yeah. I became a puddle oh, in the man. floor. I I got my worship back that day. Yes, I sir. got my song back that day. And I'm thinking about it like this, Pastor Jody, because we've been talking about how worship takes us to this level. And I remember in the Psalms where David says, You brought me up out of the horrible pit, out of the miry clay. And set my feet upon a rock and establish my going. You put a new song in my mouth. Even praise to you yes. that the world may see, hear, and know that you are God. This is what the personal worship is about. Yes, sir. It's one thing to come to this house and worship. And it is a wonderful thing. It yes. is a glorious and blessed yes. thing. Yes, it is a whole nother thing when worship comes to your house. Absolutely. It makes Amen. a shift. Zacchaeus looks at Jesus and says, now that you're here in my house, I'm doing things different with my life, with my money, yes. with my business. It changed everything. Everything. It changed. Pastor Jody, will you pray for us today? That the Lord will put into the hearts of his people to make worship not an event that we do on Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights, yes. but that we'll make worship a lifestyle. Yes. Can you do that for us today? Absolutely. Lord, I thank you for this yes, anointed, appointed oh, time ba, 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 today, God. It's powerful. We feel you in this room right now, God. And in this room right now, Lord, we ask you to minister to your people right yes, now, to Jesus. understand about worship, yes, Lord. That it's going to help pull them out of some of the worst things that they could ever go through in their life. Help them to understand that the personal yes, time that Jesus. they spend with you is the most important time. And anything that happens in church is just going to be an overflow of what they're doing in their private time, Lord. We want more of you, Lord, and less of ourselves. And the way we have that happen is by prayer and by worship, Lord. Our worship helps us to get closer to you, Lord. You, you show us things that you wouldn't normally show us, Lord, when we're worshiping you. And God, right now, I help... I, or I pray right now, yes, God, Jesus. that you would just allow us yes. all to understand yes. that yes. there is power and yes, intimacy yes, in God. our worship, Lord, oh, and God. in our times in the Share morning that we will worship you, our times at dinner in our house we will worship you, that with our kids, Lord, after school we will worship you, Lord, and that our houses will be a culture of worship, Lord, and breakthrough. We proclaim that and we believe it today in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hey, listen, we told you yesterday, and I say it to you again today, find a place to yes. worship. If you can do it now, do it now. Find a place to worship. God not only wants to show himself to you in his house, he wants to show himself to you in your house. Amen. Watch how everything changes when you begin to worship and you Amen. invite Jesus into your house. Hey, listen, we love you and we bless you. We'll be back here tomorrow. Until then, God bless you. Hey, everybody, Pastor Jason here. We want to thank you for joining us for today's devotion. Remember to share it across your social media platforms. If you live in the South Atlanta area or the North Macon and Forsyth areas and you are looking for a great church where the power and the presence of God are on display, we would love to have you visit us at our Revival Center campus in Locust Grove, Georgia, or our Forsyth campus in Forsyth, Georgia. You can find information about these locations at our website, AbundantLifeChurch.com. Remember, it's time to stretch yourself. It's time to dream bigger. It's time to believe for the impossible. It's time to expand.